the last video, I used frictionless carts to talk about the relationship between acceleration, force, and mass. We saw that acceleration is directly proportional to force and inversely proportional to mass. That can be summarized in Newton's second law. Acceleration equals net force over mass. Often referred to as F equals MA, which if, you're, if you remember your algebra, you can multiply both sides of this by mass and get F equals MA. And we're going to use this form because this form is much more useful in this course. And in general, when considering acceleration and how it's affected by those two other factors. So acceleration and net force both have arrows over them, indicating that those are vectors, meaning that direction is important for those. And in fact, acceleration and net force are always in the same direction. Write that down. Acceleration and net force are always in the same direction. We'll come back to that later. Mass is a scalar. It doesn't have any direction. When it comes to the baseball and the paper ball, they fall at the same rate, despite the fact that the baseball has the bigger force of gravity acting on it. drop the baseball, the force of gravity is the only force acting on it of any significance. Air resistance is so small we can neglect it. The same is true for the paper ball. But the force of gravity on the paper ball, as we've discussed in a previous video, is quite small. So I'll just draw it with a small F to represent that small size force. Previously we drew force diagrams for both of these. To figure out the force of gravity, we can also measure them with a spring scale, as I've done previously, uh, not on video, but in a previous class. Now, when it comes to mass, the bottom part of this equation, are the masses equal? No, the baseball has much more mass than the paper ball. So when it comes to the baseball, there's a large force pulling on it, 1.5 newtons, not really all that large, but 30 times bigger than the force of gravity on the paper ball. And it has a relatively large mass. The paper ball has a smaller force and a smaller mass. And so they fall at the same rate because they have the same ratio of force to mass. If we put numbers in for this, sometimes that helps some students to see those come out to be the same. So the baseball has a force of gravity of 1.5 newtons and a mass of 0.15 kilograms, or 150 grams. You can divide that. Go ahead and try it on your calculator if you like. Pause the video. And what did you get? gotten 10. And the units are not obvious at all, but it does work out that the units are meters per second squared or meters per second per second. Now for the paper ball, the force of gravity, as we measured in a previous class, is 0 0.05 newtons. The mass is 0 0.005 kilograms, or 5 grams. And if we divide those, we also get 10 meters per second per second, which I don't have room to write. But you can see that they're going to be equivalent. I'll put it down here. So in either case, the acceleration is the same, which we can witness, and we have witnessed several times. The acceleration, the change in their velocity is the same, despite the fact that one of them has a much bigger force of gravity than the other. 